pens and pencils are a really popular macro photography subject and I see people shooting these all the time, but usually only ballpoint pens. Uh, today I want to do something a little bit different to that. I've got some fountain pens to take a look at. These are really detailed, so I'm really excited to get up close. Stick around, or we'll take a look together. Hi guys, I'm Ben from Adapt Looks and welcome back to another macro photography tutorial where today we are shooting um, fountain pens. Now I've got a couple of fountain pens here. I've got a white one and a, uh, a darker one, so a shiny silver nib and also a slightly more detailed black uh, metal nib. Um, so both of these should provide a little bit of a um, uh, variety in the types of photographs that we're going to get. But both of them are going to pose a little bit of a challenge. They're both quite reflective and very detailed, so we're going to need to get up close and potentially do a little bit of focus stacking. The first thing that I need to do is secure my pen somehow, uh, so for that I'm going to be using my uh, macro subject holder. One of my pens at the moment doesn't actually have any ink in it, so I can take all of the, uh, the rest of the pen off. I've just unscrewed it so it's just the nib, uh, which gives me this nice little um, surround which holds nicely into this contraption just here. This is my macro subject holder. Uh, I'll put a link up in the top right hand corner for you if you want to check these out, but they're really nice for holding subjects steady uh, with these flexible arms and crocodile clips. Uh, now the crocodile clips don't open quite wide enough to grab uh, the whole pen um, securely. Uh, you can sort of get it to hold a little bit, but it's a little bit prone to snapping out there. So what I'm going to do is actually uh, hold it using the very end of the pen. Uh, now I can position this uh, any way that I'd like so that I can get a good angle on the nib, uh, and then I can start moving my camera around to try and suit this subject. So as you can see, I've got a pretty straightforward shot on here, uh, both um, figuratively and literally. We're just looking straight at the front of the pen. Um, looking at the back of the camera though, uh, we can immediately see that this is quite dark, this image. We've got a lot of stuff in the background from um, the rest of my living room. And uh, you'll notice down here that we've got an ISO of 6400, which is a little bit high for my liking. So I'm actually going to lower this all the way down until we can't see any of that background anymore. And you can double check that by looking at the histogram and making sure that uh, most of the pixels are pure black or as close to it as you can get. Uh, now that obviously leaves our photo really underexposed, uh, but for this shot, I'm going to add a little bit of lighting just to the pen itself, which should bring back some of that detail and interest in uh, the nib of the pen. For those of you familiar with the channel, you know what's coming next. I'm going to be lighting uh, my pen using the Adapt Look Studio. So I've got my Adapt Lux control pod sat here on the top of a little mini tripod, and all that I need to do is plug in a lighting arm. So we have these flexible lighting arms which plug into the ports on the front of the uh, control pod, and then we have uh, a really controllable, directable um, point of light that we can move to be exactly where we need it to be, pointing at the tip of our pen. Now, the control of this light is going to be really important for these pens. They're quite small, they're quite detailed, and they're reflective, so moving the light around and finding the right spot for your light to be shining on these reflective nibs is going to be really important. Now, of course, I can also do other things to my light. I can narrow the beam angle by uh, uh, twisting the end of the lighting arm, and I can add diffusion just by snapping on magnetic diffusers, all of which are going to change the look of the lighting falling on my pen. Now this shot, as you can see, is uh, looking quite nice with that dark black background. I'm going to tweak it a little bit more and then capture this as a pretty straightforward uh, basic shot of my fountain pen. Then we're going to do something a little bit more creative and a little bit more interesting with them. So I've got a couple of uh, really good shots of the front of my nibs and getting up closer, I've noticed there's a few differences between the two types of nibs that I've got. I've got this uh, lightly colored silvery nib and a black nib in this pen. Um, this one is brand new. I've only used it a few times, but this one I've been using for uh, several years now and there's little dots of ink all over it. There's lots of scratches and uh, a lot of interesting detail when you get really close up. 
Um, but we've taken our most basic shot here, just looking straight onto the front of these nibs. I want to add a little bit of extra interest and detail. The first thing I'm going to do is actually change the angle that I'm shooting from a little bit, uh, just to give it a little bit more interest in the frame. Maybe even change the angle so that we're um, looking down the end of the nib, uh, so there's a little bit of depth as well. Uh, now, this is where our focus stacking is going to come in. If you've got an angle on your nib, you either need to choose between having a little bit out, out of focus or having it all in focus by using a focus stacking rail like I've got here. You can move your camera uh, with really fine increments through your photograph and capture shots as you go. Once you've got a stack of shots, you can process them together to have a perfectly in-focus image of your nib, no matter the angle and no matter your depth of field. If you'd like a little bit more information on how to focus stack shots like this, I'll link it up in the top right-hand corner to a really good tutorial where we can see exactly how that process comes together. Now, I'm going to start adding a little bit of colour to these shots as well. So we've changed our angle and our composition a little bit. Now it's time to add something that will catch the eye. I'm going to use the Adapts Look Studio once again, but this time with some coloured lighting arms and colour filters to see if we can't grab the viewer's attention. So sticking with that black background look, we've actually added another light here, which is pink. You can see the pink light up in this corner and the white light still up in this corner. Don't worry about these being in the shot. When you've got a black background shot like this, you can easily delete those two uh, lights from your frame uh, later on. Uh, now, as you can see, we've done this using uh, another white lighting arm with a pink color filter. And this is our original lighting arm still with that diffuser on the front there. Um, and together, those are creating two streaks down the uh, front of my pen um, with a couple of reflections, one of which has a little bit of color, which I think uh, just catches the eye a little bit more. Now, you might be wondering what these uh, yellow markings are. Now, my camera has a setting called uh, focus peaking, which when you turn that on, it's going to give you these um, guidelines. These are little yellow uh, lines that, um, as you change your focus, indicates all the points in your image that are the most in focus, the sharpest points of your photograph. This is really handy for shots like this where you've got a lot of detail and especially if your eyesight isn't great like mine, it can really help to find exactly where you're focused. Now I'm going to focus stack by moving um, my focusing rail through my image and taking photos as I go and you can see that focus peaking following my point of focus throughout my image and let's take a look at the results. Now with a couple of different types of shots under my belt, I want to try one last type of shot using my fountain pens. And it's going to be a little bit more creative, not my usual style where I'm focus stacking and uh, quite deliberately posing everything. I want to set my pens on a book and then go freehand with my camera and just find some interesting angles uh, with some nice lighting to boot. So I've pulled one of my books off my bookshelf. This one is particularly old. This is from 1910 and it's got all sorts in it with a, a medical dictionary and a legal guide and a commercial guide and a social guide and a uh, guide to the world in the British Empire. Uh, very old book, very interesting stuff, but it's actually got a lot of really tiny writing in it, which I think will suit my fountain pen. Uh, if I just open up my book and place it onto my pages, I can get a nice shot with a writing implement and some paper as well. So as you can see, this is a very different type of shot to my previous ones. Uh, going a little bit more realistic and a little bit more situational by opening my book. I've got it open at a guide to uh, education and the professions, and we're looking at accountants and things here. Uh, so you can see how this could easily be used for uh, maybe some stock photography or something like that. You can point your nib at a particular profession maybe. Uh, so I've got mine open at private accountants here, which I think is quite appropriate for the style of pen that that we've got. Um, and I've changed my lighting once again. I've still got my white lighting arm with a diffuser, which is giving me a nice uh, white highlight for some accurate colors on my page and just a little white reflection on my nib. But then I've also brought in this 
orange diffuser back here, which is giving me a more old timey glow to the background of my image, bringing in a little bit of amber light. It perhaps looks like candlelight or something like that. Um, now this isn't a particularly old timey pen, um, but we'll ignore that for the time being. Maybe you've got a really old school um, nib going around and maybe you can get a little bit more authentic old, uh, old timey photo than me. Um, but for now, I'm really enjoying this type of shot, just going freehand with my camera uh, and shooting at different angles to get some interesting shots I think works really well for these pens and my uh, my white pen here with the silver nib remains the easier one of the two to photograph the black pen uh, again really really dark and really dark in contrast to the white pages as well uh, so very very hard to expose although it does have a little bit more detail I think perhaps the black pen suited uh, the other style of shot a little bit more and the uh, the white pen suited this kind of shot um, but I'll leave that to you guys to decide and let me know down in the comments which of these two pens you prefer. Controlling the reflections on my fountain pens is proving to be a challenge, but is one well worth having a go at. There's lots and lots of subjects that reflect uh, light just like these pens, so uh, it will come in handy to uh, to practice a little bit with what your uh, lighting is doing to a reflective object uh, like the nibs of our pens. Don't forget that there's a lot more interesting uh, features to our pens as well. Uh, the undersides where the ink flows through can often be really detailed as well. Well, um, but for now, I think I've got all of the photographs that I wanted to get um, and I've explored my pens uh, enough to show you guys what's possible with fountain pen macro photography. Let me know down in the comments whether you enjoyed this style of photograph, uh, which of the three styles that we looked at would you uh, prefer to uh, use in your own photographs. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit the like button uh, to let me know that you'd like more content just like this. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button. We've got lots more macro photography tutorials, ideas and inspiration coming in the future. But for now, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.